it's Joe with Jolie Farms. Welcome back to the channel. I'm here with my friend Nancy Kelly. We're at her restaurant, Blue Car. And we want to talk to you a little bit about this restaurant today because you need to know about it. This is a place where locals and expats come together. It's a whole community of people here. We want you to get a good look at what we've got inside of here. Why don't we get started? Okay. And don't forget Lola, our mascot. And Lola. Yes, come on. Hey, it's Joe with Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. So glad you're here with us today. I'm busy with my friend Nancy Kelly. Nancy, thank you for having us today. Thank you for being here. Well, we enjoy it. It's a rainy, kind of nasty day, but uh, Nancy owns a restaurant in Vilcabamba, Ecuador. It's called El Carro Azul, or the blue car in English. So Nancy's had this place a while. Nancy, tell us where you're from originally. Originally, I'm from upstate New York, near Albany and I grew up there for 18 years, went off to college in Massachusetts, and after that did quite a bit of traveling. And awesome. I, yeah, it was. I joined Peace Corps, was in Africa. After that I wandered around Central America and the Caribbean, and I don't know, then eventually I got a job, and, <laughs> <Darn. laughs> and that, that kind of that ended that, but that's... So, how long have you lived here in Vilcabamba? I've been here for over nine years now. Over nine years. It's been a, it's been a while. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. home. It's You're home. almost an old timer here. Almost, <laughs> almost. Those who have lived here past ten years, I consider to be old timers in the area. Well, I've been in Ecuador longer. I lived in Cuenca for two years at, before I moved down here, and I've been visiting Vilcabamba since 2009 or 10. So. So what is it that you like about Vilcabamba? What was the attraction? The people, all the crazy people here. I really just felt so comfortable in Vilcabamba. And, you know, I love the wide variety of ages here, the wide variety of nationalities that live here. And it's just always been a very comfortable place for me. So. We call the crazies the, the local flavor, if you yes, will. Yes, yes, we... And, uh, everybody's so different here, and it, it really is it's, it's what brings it its uniqueness, I think. Yeah, I, everybody's kind of crazy in their own way, but it's kind of nice, you know? It's, it's not your most conventional place. Not that conventional, yeah. And I yeah. think even with the locals, you know, uh, the local Ecuadorians, and I think... You know, they're a little different, you know, from one one family to the next. They all have their sure. little idiosyncrasies, if you sure. will. Sure. And, you know, and for the most part, they, they adjust to us, and, you know, it's, it seems to work out. So, yeah, it's, so. a, it's a great little community, nice village. Yes. yes. So, Nancy, um, how long ago did you start the restaurant here in Vilcabamba? We started building it just about five years ago. And we opened in, we'll, we'll, we'll have five years of being open come this June. And my partner and husband really did all the uh, design work and all the construction. Well, not himself, obviously, he had help. But he constructed all of this. And, and he's the one who laid out the different spaces and... You know, it was, he was the creative guy behind it. Like you were saying, your wife is the creative. Her, Axel was was extremely creative, and he had he had a vision in mind. When we first opened this room here, well, I guess, well, people can't see it, but this was just a ping pong table. And as we were open and we grew, we we you know changed things and made this our music room and. But, but he designed all the separate spaces, which you know, make it kind of unique. Nancy has a lot of um, a live music here, and there's, there's so much talent in Vilcabamba. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many people that come here that have uh, all walks of life in terms of talent. Yes. Um, everything from South American music, you know, all the way to blues and... Uh, Rock and roll, and we've had classical here too. Classical too, we've had yeah. Classical, we've had jazz. We, we, we look for all kinds of music here, and uh, one of these days we're even going to get some country western. I'm not sure when, but yeehaw. we might. So as we say in Texas, yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'd come out for that job. I might. Maybe I might would. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that it, would be it's nice. got to be earlier though, because I'm usually in bed by six o'clock. 
Are I you got really? The, oh yeah, man, I got the old people thing going on. Oh wow, I thought I, thought I was bad. <laughs> I'm like nine or ten, but boy. <laughs> we came here once for a birthday party <coughs> that I think started about five o'clock. And um, when, so we were here for that birthday party. And you know, about seven o'clock, I'm looking and I'm going, oh yeah, it's bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, Nancy, tell us about your menu here at the restaurant. What can people expect when they come here? Sure. Well, I, I, it just so happens I have a copy, funnily enough. And we have one side in, spa in English and the other side in Spanish. And do you want me to hold it up or just yeah, read sure. it off? Or, read I, mean, it off but... I don't know if they can see it or not. Well, so... they may not be able to see it. But... And I'll hold up the English side in case anybody can see it. But we have sandwiches. We have... Um, you know, for one thing, we have the best uh, the best cheesesteak sandwich in town. It's really, really good. Philly cheesesteak, or it's similar to that. Very oh. similar to that. You know, we we've you know the meat here is a little bit different, so we had to we experimented a lot before we came up with a combination that tasted like a Philly cheesecake steak. Yeah. So, and we have salads and we have Mexican food. You know, we have nachos, we have burritos. Uh, and we do have some, we've got some pasta, of course, and we do have some nice dinners. Some of our dinners are kind of elegant. Um, sometimes, you know, people just want a nice meal, so we've got filet mignon, we've got a surf and turf, we have barbecued ribs, we have salmon, we have chi chicken in a nut sauce is delicious. You know, we just have a, a lot of different things. And we have special meals. Every week we have some special meals. On Wednesday, we always have curry. On um, Tuesday, it's our Mexican night. It's our specialty night. And we're currently developing a Greek night. Uh, there's no Greek food in town. It's hard to find food in town that nobody else has. So we're developing a Greek night. And um, I think we're going to be implementing it either this coming next week or the week after. You know, we've been experimenting with the recipes, so I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Fantastic. I, you know, you left out the one thing that I really like here, What's and that? that's your pizza. Ah, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to make a Greek pizza, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, we have, we have pizza. Thursday through Saturday, we serve pizza, usually after 4 or 5 o'clock. We have to wait till the oven gets heated up, and hopefully we'll be able to take a picture of our oven where we make the pizza we before you guys go. And uh, yeah, our pizza's wonderful. Uh, we had a man who ran a pizza shop in uh, a pizza restaurant in the States, basically helped us, showed us his recipe, and so we, we created it from there. So personally, I think it's the best in town, but I'm not biased. Very good, we've I'm had it biased. here, and it's, it's good pizza. I like the crust, yeah. and yeah. Um, they have you know an old style pizza oven, which is, really good at, at getting that temperature up above 600 degrees where it needs to be yeah and um yeah we try for 800 800 there yeah, you go we yeah try for yeah most people don't know pizza needs to be cooked way above 600 yes. so yeah to really make that crust turn out nice yeah exactly exactly and best crust around i think out of your oven no doubt thank you thank you and you also uh failed to mention your breakfast on saturdays the brunch we don't do that anymore. Oh, you don't do that anymore? No, we dropped that. Uh, oh. There is one in town now, but, but we're not doing it. It, um, it. it turned out to be kind of difficult for us to do. So, Got to know your lane, right? Sta yeah, staff were, were here all day long, and they were getting tired. And so we just thought, okay, this is, you know, we'll, we'll open at 1 o'clock. You're more of a lunch and evening Yes. Kind of crowd. Yeah, I we, got it. We open at 1 and go till 10 during the week and sometimes 12 on weekends. And, Fantastic. And then we close. <laughs> well, Nancy, what would you like people to know about you and your restaurant? Oh, that we're probably the most fun place in town. Yeah. And we've got great food. We've got great staff. The staff here is absolutely amazing. Um, all of them... Uh, well, I shouldn't say all of them, but uh, three quarters of them have been with us since we opened, and oh. and they stay, and so, and and they're really some of the nicest people you'll ever meet, and so, I think I think the staff make it actually, and and you know I think um, one of the things people need to know too is that you serve craft beer, the Sol de Venado, 
Yes, we serve um, Sol de Venado craft beer. It's made up in San Pedro, as you know. And we also have a variety of cocktails. We have mojitos. We have mojitos and margaritas are probably uh, the favorites. And we just got some horseradish, so our bloodies are going to pick up. Ooh, <laughs> it's hard really? to get horseradish around here. It really is. It's yeah. hard to get horseradish. But when you have it, you can make really good bloodies. And, you know, Marco, our, he's our manager and our bartender. Uh, he's been bartending now for probably 12 years, and he can make a drink. And anything people want. I mean, if somebody wants a daiquiri, we can do it. You know, somebody wants strawberry in a margarita, sure, we'll put strawberry. You know, we're very, we're very flexible like that. And, you know, I, um, I, I want to mention, too, that they have a pool table here, so... A lot of people like to come here and shoot pool and hang out and visit. And this restaurant, as you'll see from the, the uh, B-roll that we'll add to this, you'll see this restaurant has a lot of great little areas where um, if you don't want to be around the pool table, there's lots of little cubby type areas. Exactly. Um, um, and that was kind of Axel's genius is that he carved out spaces. We have a space for the music area. Uh, there's a really nice space upstairs above the dining room that's lovely for a romantic dinner and that's and, also where the domino group comes and the and domino yeah the domino group comes on friday and then we've got the pool uh area and the bar pool area you know for people just want to come in and hang out and have some beers and play pool and have fun so you know you you can find a spot that will suit you and you know that's something we've really been nice. here for breakfast in the past where you had some um, a guitar player up here, or like you had Marilyn and Carl. Carl and Marilyn used to play for And they were brunch. awesome. You know, she plays the cello and he plays mm -hmm. the guitar, and uh, they are such talented people. And it was just kind of nice having them in the background, you know, while sure. we're eating. And you can, it's not so loud that you can't have a conversation at your table. Sure. It's just very entertaining. We have music every Wednesday for curry night. And we have that early. That starts always between five and six, depending on when the musician wants to start. And it's always soft. Like Jiminy played last night, and he played he plays classical piano here. And you know, people people will come out just to hear him because he's so accomplished. Mm. And then on Fridays and Saturdays, we we will often have bigger bands. And I mean, sometimes not. Sometimes just uh, one person or two people, but. We have big bands, and they come in, and they generally start between seven and eight. A little bit late for you, I think, but uh, but we've you know we've had this place packed with people just dancing. We've had to move to t the tables out of here to make room for people dancing, and it's it's just a lot of fun. And you know, after after we had to be closed down for COVID, uh, is when we really took off. We were the first restaurant to reopen. And people who before, you know, were a little bit up the hill outside of Vilcabamba, about five minutes. And for the, a lot of people in Vilcabamba, the mentality was, uh, oh, it's so far out of town. But when we opened up after, after we had to close down for the virus, um, people who had never been here before came to see it. And since, a lot of them have become regular customers and... We really exploded after that time. You know, that mm -hmm. was when we really, really took off. You know, we'd been popular before, but, you know, after COVID, we just, it's hard to handle. <laughs> so really far out of town, walking from uh, the park, <laughs> it's about 10 minutes. <laughs> it's, it's all relative, yeah, you it's know, all relative. it's all relative. But it's, it's on the, uh, the Yambarada via that goes to uh, Yambarada. Yes, yeah. it's it's on it's on one of the very main roads in Vilcabamba, very yeah. easy to find. And if you're new in town and can't find it, just that's a taxi driver. They know where everything is, you know. So they know everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and most of them speak English, so if your Spanish isn't that good, you can still find your way here. Spanish challenge, as we call it. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. So um, you know, if you're in Vilcabamba, I hope you'll visit Blue Car. Um, we want to give you an idea about Blue Car because it's such a unique place. There's almost no better atmosphere. I think, um, you know, I like the atmosphere at Shanta's, but there's a lot more room here to spread out, I think, at your restaurant. Yes. And, um, yes. and therefore, a lot more little nuances, I think, little uh, just little areas where you can hang out and 
So I think it's cool, you know? Yeah. It's a great place to be. Yeah, I think so too. And and we're, we're not going to do a franchise. This is the one and only. This this isn't transportable anywhere else, I don't think. It's like, look Lose at this place. Loses character, I think, <laughs> yeah. So. So you hear the chicken in the background telling us it's time to wake up. So we get that a lot from the roosters here in Vilcabamba. Yes, we do. And uh, today there's no dogs barking, but that that's Yay. that's a regular occurrence. But it's part of the charm. It's, yeah, so. exactly right. Well, Nancy, thank you so much for having us today. Well, we thank appreciate you, Joe. it. It, it really, thank you guys so much for coming up and um, you know uh, showing off the blue car. Uh, you know, it's it's kind of my love. You know, we we started it and. You know, we, we built most of the structures here. That structure was, well, I'm pointing to something the audience can't see, but um, you know, th there was a structure here before, but then we built everything else. And uh, so it's kind of it's kind of a baby for us, for me. <laughs> yeah, your, your love, yeah, I get it. So folks, um, visit Nancy here at Blue Car. I think you'll enjoy it and, and you'll have good food and a good time. Great food, great drinks, great pizza. And we'll take pictures of that menu, so we'll oh, put okay. that up. Cool. Definitely. And if you folks enjoyed this video today, we hope you'll give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you for watching. Thank you. Bye. Bye.